This is Lesson 6, corresponding to Chapter 6, Network Security Management. The learning objectives of this chapter are to identify network security management best practices and strategies for responding when security measures fail. The key concepts are the best practices for network security management, strategies for integrating network security strategies with firewall defenses and VPN remote access, and the value of incident response, planning, testing, and practice. Best Practices Strategy In order to have a good strategy, you need to create written plans. You need to have a sound security policy, an incident response plan, a business continuity plan, a disaster recovery plan, and various security checklists. You need to perform regular maintenance and back up regularly and test restores frequently. Regularly probably means every day. You're not going to do a full back every day, backup every day, but an incremental or differential backup done every day uh, with, a, with a full backup done once a week will probably be your best bet. You need to monitor and view collected log files frequently, and you need to constantly identify the weakest architectural link in your system. You need to perform diligent testing of new systems before deploying in production. You need to implement the principle of least privilege and you need to deploy layered defenses. Devices. Best practices for devices include maintaining physical security over the users and the equipment. This is getting harder and harder to do in the world of uh, the era of BYOD, bring your own device, where employees are allowed to bring their own smartphones or tablets as long as they're authorized to be used uh, in the or work environment uh, because they belong to the employee. But, um, of course, if, if a device, if such a device is actually issued to the employee from the company, that's a different story. But there still needs to be a very sound BYOD policy in the organization if this is what you're, if you're going to allow to bring them to bring their own devices to work. You need to install and maintain virus and malware protection at all layers in the environment, including BYOD uh, devices. You need to harden both internal and perimeter devices develop and follow a patch management strategy, and enforce hard, enforce hard drive or file encryption. Connect Best practices for connectivity. You need to restrict internet connections to required activity. This can be changed somewhat to allow users to access other websites than what's necessary for work, but if you're going to allow that, you need to ensure that the such a privilege is uh, not abused which of course leads to uh, what we discussed earlier about monitoring. You need to limit road and remote access to required connectivity. You need to encrypt all internal network traffic. You need to require multi-factor authentication, whether it is the use of a user ID password then generating a, um, a code that is sent to a pre-authorized smartphone, or whether it's some other kind of multi-factor authentication such as user ID password uh, in conjunction with some biometrics. And you need to use default deny or de over default permit as much as possible. Fail secure, fail open, and fail closed states. Fail secure state reverts to a condition where little or no harm is likely to happen. Depending upon the situation, fail, a fail secure state could be fail open or fail closed. A fail open state is to revert to a state of being open, available, or unlocked. In the case of the physical world, this is important to the safety of personnel. Fail open doors allow people to leave a building easily, especially in the case of some kind of physical disaster such as a fire. However, such easily open doors might represent a weakness that an intruder could exploit to access secured internal areas. In the case of IT, Fail open is to revert to a state of unfiltered communication or data access. Fail close is to revert to a state of being closed, unavailable, or locked. In the case of the physical world, to fail close is to prevent a doorway or container from being opened during an emergency or compromise. In the case of IT, fail close blocks access to communications and other digital resources. Physical security. When it comes to physical security, you want to make sure that em that uh, employees have no direct access to any uh, 
component or any element of the physical uh, organization of the structure that they do not have, that they're not allowed to have access to. The facility should re resist forcible entry. Personnel should be monitored, maybe with CCTV or other methods. And you should have card key entry alarms, motion detectors, and cameras. There should be at least some kind of two-factor authentication to allow authorized personnel into the organization's building. Uh, perhaps, like I mentioned before, user ID password combined with biometrics. So, <laughs> mentions card key entry, that could be like user ID password combined with some kind of card key entry. And of course, alarms, motion detectors would be important uh, in the case of somebody trying to break into the physical uh, facility uh, without authorization. Incident response. Incident response involves preparation, detection, containment, eradication, recovery, and follow-up. <coughs> in preparation, we select and train security incident team, SIRT, members and allocate the resources. In detection, we actually we confirm actual breaches. In containment, we try to restrain further escalation of the incident. In eradication, we resolve the compromise or the, the compromise to the system. In recovery, we return to the normal operation, and in follow-up, we have to review the process in order in order to improve future responses, conducting some kind of after-action report to do so. The incident response, incident response team consists of a team leader, information security members, network administrators, physical security personnel, legal if that's involved in if your organization is big enough to have a legal department, you might have to have outside legal um, <coughs> personnel that are on retainer, human resources and communications and public relations. You may think that public relations is not important, but if your organization has an incident, PR is crucial to getting your story out properly. Uh, we've seen so much in the past, recently in the past year, Target, Michaels, uh, and of course the, 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 the big Sony hack, where public relations is crucial to uh, getting the, t the message out and getting it out properly and getting it out promptly. Uh, uh, you want to make sure, you, you know, you don't want to get the message out immediately if it's not correct. But PR can be very important to the um, reputation of the organization after it has been compromised. Compartmentalization and containment. Compartmentalization is an element of infrastructure design. It creates small collectives of systems that support work tasks while minimizing risk. Containment should interrupt or interfere with the continued uh, spread or operation of the unwanted event. You need to interrupt it and keep it from spreading throughout the organization. Honeypots, honey nets, and padded cells. Honeypots trap intruders, detects new attacks, and serve as a decoy. Honey nets is a network of honeypots, and a padded cell is a form of a honeypot turned on when an intruder is detected, it acts as a lure. One thing you want to make sure you do not do is back attack uh, an intruder after they have gotten into your system. Uh, doing so could actually be illegal. Host security controls. On a host you need an antivirus scanner, an anti-malware scanner, some kind of software host firewall. You should look into whole hard drive encryption, hash integrity checking mechanism, and you need to audit, monitor, and log local and network events, especially on the, each host. Backup and recovery. This can be done online, off-site, or on-site. Online is typically done to the cloud, uh, like such as Amazon Web Services or some other type of online uh, cloud-based backup. Off-site could be shipment of physical media to another location. When I worked at Great Dane Trailers, we actually shipped the the daily tapes to another Great Dane location in Savannah, not our, where our primary computer system was, and they were stored there. Uh, I believe they would be stored on site for three days and then and then taken to the off site location on the third day. On site is risky, especially if the on site location is very close to the primary backup server. But if kept in a sealed room or location on site but away from the server, 
this could be an option, especially if your organization is prone to having to frequently recover from backup. And again, when I was at Great Dane where we stored the uh, backups on site uh, for just three days, they were stored in a sealed room and then taken to another location off site after three days. Network security assessments. So a network security assessment is the process of judging, testing, and evaluating a deployed security solution. User training is educational information presented through various mechanisms that clearly define security policies, their boundaries, and imposed limitations. It's important because it drives user accountability, understanding, and acceptance of obligatory security policies. It is imperative that regular renewal of security awareness training occurs. Some organizations test their employees on a frequent basis, well, frequent being once or twice a year, to ensure that they um, are still aware of current and, and upcoming or current and existing threats that uh, are posed to the organization. Security awareness. It defines, informs, explains, and teaches users the principles of security and why they're important. Every user in an organization has a part to play in upholding company security. Awareness and education may be tailored to job-specific or role-specific content. Policies and procedures are driven by people. Without mechanisms that can be used to aid users in secure network use, much of the administrative work put into implementing best practices for network security may become disreputable. Some network security management tools. You need a written security policy. You need a complete inventory of the hardware and software. You need a physical cabling layout and device location map. You need logical organization addressing and subnetting map. A complete configuration documentation for every device and change documentation and log. You need backup and restoration procedures. You need business continuity and disaster recovery strategy. You need troubleshooting guidelines, hardware and software documentation, personal knowledge and skill and access to online resources. Your physical security checklist should include checking window and door locks, external walls, inspecting access points to raised floor areas and drop ceilings, ensure that cabinets and containers are locked, verifying that security cameras are pointing in the correct direction. Inspecting access points to the raised floor areas and drop ceilings, somebody gaining access through a ventilation shaft sounds like something out of a Mission Impossible movie, but the fact of the matter is it can happen and it need, these need to be inspected. And cameras pointing in the correct direction, you'd be surprised how many cameras aren't pointed in the right direction. Uh, of course, a camera pointing in the wrong direction means that somebody is trying to hide something or even if it's just by accident, you're not recording what you intended to record. You need to verify that all light bulbs are the correct type and are functioning. You have to check your motion detectors. You have to test your alarm systems, and you need to interview security guards in confirming compliance with procedures. Logical security checklists should include check authentic authentication, authorization, and access control. Audit your systems. Verify firewalls and other filters. Check proxies and other communication management solutions. Verify encryption, including key management. Update antivirus software and scanners and backup and store archival information securely. Network troubleshooting. You need to be able to prevent issues from occurring, then triage them. Make sure that you have your updates and patches pr performed. Ensure that you check for your physical damage. Look, at, look into power faults because that could be a problem. Power faults can take down the system. And of course, hardware failure can do it as well. A security information event monitoring uh, tool, SIEM, that allows for automation of log and event centralization and analysis. The functions of this are to centralize the logs, manage them, and monitor them. And the purposes are for incident detection, incident response, and alerting. Such a tool will allow you to, to um, read through the logs much faster than you could do as a person, you know, with a human eye looking for patterns and looking for issues that could occur. Some tools include Envision, Cradar, Eventia, Security Manager, and In-Depth. You need to conduct network security assessments and perform a risk assessment. 
execute the security assessment, perform configuration scanning, vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, and perform a post-mortem assessment review. In summary, the best practices for network security management, we went over those, strategies for integrating network security strategies with firewall defenses and VPN remote access, and the value of incident response planning, testing, and practice.